Okay, good. So you can see the screen now. Yeah, I can see it. Good. So I was saying that uh, the I. Uh, so, okay. uh, so I said VA is just the voltage at the line A. VB is just the voltage at the line B. And VC is the voltage at the line C. And IA, IB, IA, IB, IC are all currents on the line. Okay. So when, okay. Uh, so the line, we have line A, line B, line C, like three-phase line. So it's a yes. three-phase line. So a fault occurs on a three-phase line. So we have mm -hmm. to determine the sequences. And I, I said that an area that said, uh, somebody says that said, if a fault occurs, then there is positive sequence that will flow. The voltage and current, whatever it happens, there's positive sequence. There is also a negative fault sequence that will flow. Okay, and there's also a zero sequence that will flow. And the person says that if you join these three together, that's supposed to give you the balance system that was balance. Yeah, that was this thing. So it's like he's saying balance is equals to that. You get his point. Yes. So he's saying balance is equals to that. Okay, good. So when a fault occurs, so now let's see. The fault has occurred, and that fault. Or uh, whatever is bridging it will have a resistance. So this is the fourth resistance or the fourth impedance. And that could be a human being that is bridging, yes. that is bridging the system. Or a bed. Or a bed, yes. It could be a human being, a bed that is bridging the system. So when that happens, you have to first draw initial conditions. At the initial, what is really happening? Okay. So when that happens, because this has bridged it from the line here to the ground, oh, okay. the ground, ground potential is at zero. Okay. So <laughs> because that has happened, then the, there is the system, you know, currently said that it's always looking for the safe resistance to the ground. It's yes. Not, yeah, so it will not worry to move here. It, it, uh, moving along the line, they discard it. It will not go. So it means the mm -hmm. whole of the IB will move towards the fourth resistance, which is very low than what it was expected. IB. Yeah, it will move to the... IB or M. The IA. Let me uh -huh. throw it up for you to see. Uh, I, I see, but you are confusing yourself. So the IA will move towards the fault. Yes. Path. Yes. Yes. The IA will move. Let me, I'm coming. So the IA will move towards the fault path. So this is the IA, this line here. You can see the line. Yes. The yellow sign here. It seems the IB is close at the top. That's why I think it's confusing. So it's this yeah. one will move. So it will move towards the path. Okay. Uh -huh. So once the IA gets here, pass through the fourth resistance and it gets to this junction here. Okay. Then the IB will come and meet the IA there. The IB, which is this line, will come uh -huh. and meet the IA here at this uh -huh. junction. But because there is a fault, it will not bother to go here. So together, it will also move down. Then when it reaches here, the IC will come and join it. And together, they will all move down. So it will, it will look like this way. But the line um, here, let me ask a question. Uh -huh. IA is uh, connected to ground now. It's going to ground now. Yes. But if you look at IB and IC, they are separate lines. They are going their own ways. Yes. So they are not joining. It, it doesn't form a junction. They are going their looking own at, way different from I and IB. Looking at the circuit, uh, the circuit the man gave to us, yeah. if you check, there is a link at this part. And there is a link at there's this a link. part. 
there is a symmetrical fault. The fault has occurred on the three phase. Only that the fault resistance is on only the phase A. The system, the tree is bridging the tree. Okay. Uh, uh, but the resistance that. of that fault, the rest is zero resistance, but there's resistance of that fault. It is bridging, it bridges, it bridges it and makes the rest okay. connect to the ground. Okay, the circuits Look at that. that yeah. it's bridging the tray. The tray, but the fourth oh, resistance yeah. is in that side. Yeah, there are some joint junctions there. Yes. Let, so okay. let me create this and maybe demonstrate clearly. So the whatever is it, it's bridging between this point, this point. And it causes a short circuit between this point. The B and C. Yes. And also yeah. between, yeah, so, so it bridges between, uh, so it moves from, it bridges A to B. B. And also and cause a short circuit. It causes a short circuit between B and C. Yes. That is what is happening. Good. Yeah. And so because of that, whatever current is passing, once it passes through the resistance, it will come to that point here. And it will come and meet IB at this point. And based on catch-ups, because they are not going this way, they will not go that way. Behavior yeah, of current. Uh, the least resistant path. In path, good. So, and so because of catch-ups, it means zero will go here, so there will be nothing. So because of catch-ups, IA will meet at IB here, and together they will move downwards here. Down. Down. And they will come and meet IC at this junction. And IC together with them will all move here to the ground. Are you okay now? Yes. Okay. So this will let us know that based on ketchup, so we can stand on this point and deduce the ketchups uh, on it. So let me show something. Okay, so we can stand on this. So at this point here, at this junction here, where I've marked green, okay, I see, yeah. I see, have uh, IB have added to IA. So this is actually IA plus IB. coming to that junction here, right? And I yes. see is also heading towards this junction here. So they are all coming to the junction. Ketchup said that current coming to a junction must be because of current leaving a junction. Is that not yes. this? Good. Yes. So then at the end, they will all move towards this side. So it's this side is what is moving away. So it yes. means you have to add IC plus IA plus IB, and that will be caused to the current that is at this side. That's the fourth current. Yes. That will be caught to. You cannot say that is the fourth current, but you can also say because okay. it's flowing. Because the fourth current is what is inside the IF. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. But this side are. Uh, Currents that are because of short circuit. So that could be short circuit currents. So that will be okay. current that's flowing to the ground. So, but if you look at it carefully, you see that the current that's flowing to the ground is going to the ground. So it means the current that is going to the ground will be what? It will be zero. It will be zero. Because the ground potential is zero. So it will be zero. So because it's zero, then you can confidently say that you are IC plus IA plus IB is equal to zero. Okay. So that is the first boundary condition you have to draw. So that is why we said that That is why we said that IA plus IB plus IC is equal to zero. Are you okay with that? 
Yes. Okay. Then yes, we also said that VB equals VC is equal to zero. Let's explain that. Because at the boundary, at the boundary condition, because there is no, because there is no fault resistance at line B and line C, it means that the resistance is zero and V is actually equals to IZ, right? Yes. So even if you have value for the I, which is flowing, since Z is, is zero. then V will be zero. So it means automatically we can as assume that voltage at this point all will go to the ground and voltage at C will also go to the ground. So all will be having ground potential, which is okay. zero. So all of the two of them will be zero. It's only the VA which we don't know for sure because there is a resistance there. Resistance is okay. not zero. So we don't know for sure what there is a resistance there. Are you okay so far? Yes. Okay. So that is why we said when we came to this part that when we came to this part that VB equals to VC because they are all equals to zero and it's equals yeah. to zero at this part. Okay. Okay, so the other one is VA is equal to IA times ZF. Because we said there's a current flowing, okay, at this resistor ZF here. Because we said there's a current flowing at that part, at that resistor ZF. Yes, yes. Then it's that current that is flowing is IA. So, because IA is flowing through this one, then we can determine VA. Because we can now say VA is now whatever resistance here times the current or the impedance here times the current. That is why VA is looked at. Okay. So VA can be determined. So because of that, we can say our VA is equal to the IA times ZF. So this, uh, whenever a question is given to you, you have to draw these boundary conditions. Okay. So these are our boundary conditions. So now we know our boundary conditions. So now we know our boundary conditions, which are this, which are circled red. Okay. So these are our boundary conditions, we know it. Okay. So you can now move. So the next thing is, there is a universal formula for the sequence I was talking about, that when there is a symmetrical fault occurs, we said we have the positive sequence, the negative sequence, and the zero sequence, all right? Okay. Good. So in this case, as you see here, the I0 is a positive sequence, the IA1, is a negative sequence and the IA2 is a zero sequence. That's how it has been represented here in the formula. Okay. okay. So let me get this so I can explain how come in. Okay. Good. So this was the inverse that we proved. Okay. And I said, when you are doing a sequence, you use the inverse of that matrix the A operator to do that. So we have the IA I was talking about, the IB and the IC. So once you have this, the question says you determine the values of the sequence matrices because we have IAO, that is a positive sequence current will flow when there is a fault. So you want to determine the formula when such kind of fault happens. What happens to the positive sequence or current. Okay. Let's okay, see. So I is what the, no, no. the positive I, No, that is a negative. The zero, that is the, the zero, zero sequence. Zero sequence. Then the negative yeah. sequence and the positive sequence. The negative to what? I A2. No. 
Let me check how I use it to the connections. I'm coming. Let me check the connections so that I can get back to you. Okay. 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 Good. Good. So let me see. I a one. Very good. Very good. So one is a positive. Yes. A one is a positive. So it's neg a zero sequence, positive sequence, and negative sequence. That is how I represented them. How, that is how I've represented them. Okay. So the, the, the zero here, this is the zero sequence. The one here is a positive. And the two here is a negative. Okay. Are you okay now? Okay, good. Yes. Good. So now you have to determine the zero sequence current. When that fault occurs, you have to determine the zero sequence current. And so what you do is you have to find... I O A zero. And that will be the zero sequence current, I A zero. So you multiply, so how do you determine it? You multiply the top here because it's the first value. It's the first row. So you multiply this row by this column. Okay. That is how you tell you. So it means one times IA is what? IA. IA. Yeah. One times IB is IB. IB. Then one times IC is IC. Then you add, so you have to add all of them. That is how we do it. And it's one over three. That is the factor here. So it means whatever you get, you have to divide them by three. It is a zero sequence current. Yeah, that is a zero sequence current. Are you okay? Okay. Okay. So, but we find we, we, we deduce that IA plus IB plus IC is equals to what? Zero. Good. So that means the whole of this will go to zero. So to be zero divided by three. So our answer will be what? Zero. Okay. So when such fault occurs, that means there will be no zero sequence current flowing. The fault that we just deduce, when that fault occurs on the system, there'll be no zero sequence happening. So it means if you set your relays to see zero sequence, or you have circuit breakers to see zero sequence so that it can trip, it will damage your system because there will be no zero sequence current, so it will not see them. Okay. Good. So the next thing is we have to now determine um, our IA1, which is the positive sequence, the IA1, okay? Okay. Good. So for the IA1, let's also let's use the same thing. So let me get this, the sign so that we can um, use it, okay? So for the IA1, what is this part? It's in the middle, right? So why, why, So that means we are going to multiply yes. the middle here. We are going to multiply the middle here by this currents here. Then you add them. The same thing, the same way we went about the IA0, okay? Yes. So it means one times IA, IA, then IA. A, A times IB, that will be A, IB. good, so A, IB. A, IB, okay. So then you have A squared times IC. So that will yes. be what? Yeah, good, so A that will be IC. A squared IC. Okay, so 
we have this one plus the first value, which was the IA. Okay. So this is, then you divide the whole thing by what, three. Because this side says we should divide whatever we get by three. Are you okay so far? Okay. Good. So now let me go down for us to see what is there. Okay. So when you come here for the IA one, you see that you reach you reach this part. Okay, so I've mark, I'm going to mark it green. You can see. Yes. So this is what we got, IA plus AIB plus A squared IC over three. Good, but now we don't know the values of IB and IC. And even IA, we don't know, right? We don't know, is that not it? Yes. So it means it's better we try to write them in terms of one known value so that we can actually simplify whatever we see here. So we decided that we want to change them into A, uh, uh, changing to IA terms by using A operator. So we decided to use A operator in order to change into what IA terms. So that is how, that is what is done here. Okay, so you see that IB, it's now represented as, oh, I'm coming in. Okay, you see that the IB here, I'm including the three so that at least you see clearly, not the three. You can see the IB. A, uh -huh. I, the AIB, can, you can see. The AIB over three. Good. So I want you to consider only the AIB, not the over three, right? Okay. Good. So the AIB is represented by what? This. That means I've written, if you check, can you see that I've written, I've written the AIB in terms of what? I've written it in terms of In terms of IE. E I E. Yeah. You can, see. you can see, right? I've written yes, this one. I've written this one in terms of IE. You can see at this part. You can see. Yeah, it's there, but uh-huh. Can you go back again? How you got E I B to be A Q I E? Good. So I'm going to explain that by using what we call the, the same A operator. Okay. Okay, so let me show you how it is done. So you have this. And you have this. So you can have your... Okay, okay, okay. I've understood. I can remember. Yeah, good. So... From here to the first angle is... Very good. So you have, so this will be, good, so this will be your IA, IA. So this IB. will be your IB, and this will be and your IC. IC. Okay, good. So if I move no to this side, in that to IC to IA. Good, so here between them is A. Okay. So it means IC will be equal to AIA. So now we are writing them in terms of what? A, IA, not IC. Okay. So because we are writing them in terms of this, it means um, when you are changing IB. So meaning that the, this side will rather will become the IA which is the one we are going to move. Okay. And this side, because you have to move, then this side will be your IC, and this side will be your IB. So it means A will move three times. 
Okay. Three times. So you see that you when you do a J operator, you see that you are I A will be equals to A cube times. I'm talking about I B. Sorry. I'm changing I B in terms of A. So let me do the same way for you to see, okay? Okay. Let me do it well. So we have this way. This. IB is equal to This. Okay. So this is I B. Okay. okay. This is I C. Okay. And this is IE. So what we want to do, so let me change the color. What we want to do is that we want this IB to move from here. We said we are going this direction. And you said that is anticlockwise, right? Yeah, anticlockwise. Okay, good. So you want IB to move from here to here. It means it will move one of the A. Then you move a second A here. So it means you want to rewrite, oh, let me undo that and make it clear. It will move a second A here. Are you okay so far to this point? Yeah. Okay, good. So if you want to write IB in terms of IA, then you can say IB is equals to A, squared because it's moving is equal to a squared i a okay are you okay so far yes this is okay good because it's moving the first A. The second A. The second A before it can get to this position. IA. Good. So it means it will have A squared IA. That is IB will be equal to that. So let, let's deduce what will be the value of IC. In, I, let's say IB in terms of IC. I B in terms of I C. Yes, it will be equal to what? You want I B in terms of I C? Yes. It will be. It will be A. A I C. Very good. So it will be A I C. But just one angle. Yes. So A I C. You are right. So let's. I want us to try and deduce so that you can get understanding better in that part. Okay, so we have IB in terms of IA, we have IB in terms of IC. Is that not it? So the same yes. way we can get I, we can get IA in terms of IB. IA in terms of IB. Yes. So let's write uh, that. So IA in terms of IB will be equal to what? This yes, is IA. Yes, this is IA, and you are yes. coming to this side, so it will be what AIB. Very good. Yes, so AIB. Are you okay so far? Yes. So it will be AIB. Okay. So let's say IA in terms of IC. That will be equals to what? Sorry. Uh, we want I, I A in terms of I C. I A in, in terms of I C. Yes, that would be A squared I C. Okay, very good. Because it will continue on that way. So to move A A. So A squared I C. That is wonderful. And uh, this operator you are using is called the A operator.
So in this case, uh -huh. if you are giving something like this, mm -hmm. after writing uh, the expression for A, I, A, I, B, I, C, you have to draw this diagram, the vector diagram. Yes. And then convert them all into this. It depends on what you want to do. But okay. if you want to show working, then you have to draw. But if you know by heart in your mind, no problem. But if you want to show working, then you have to draw better than what you have to remember that you have to put your IA at the top. Okay. Then go to I -E -I -E -I -C. Yeah. So you put your IA at the top. Then you can now bring your IB to follow down. Let IB come to down. Okay. So that this side will be your IC. Mm -hmm. Then you can now indicate that if you want to move, you move at A. And you are moving from IC to IA. That is how you move. Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. Good. So now, we said it, what we have here is IB, but we want to write all in terms of what IA. Okay. Okay. That is, we can say to do any other thing, but we decide to write them in terms of IA. Somebody can say to write them in terms of IC. Somebody can say to write them in terms of IB and it's still get correct answer. Okay. okay. So in terms of IA. So we said that the, what is here is IB. So, is this IB we want to change it to IA? So this one we will move it. To write it yeah. as IA. Yes. So let me undo it. So A squared IA. Very good. So we are moving. So you move two of the A's. So there's another. So A squared IA. So we can say IB is equals to A squared. I A. Okay. So, okay. but when you come here, there's A here, you can see. I B is not just I B, it's A I B. You can see that, that right. Where I'm circling. I use green mark to circle. See A I B, you can see that. Can you see? Hello, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good. I'm saying you can see that there's A there. You can see that. There's A right. Yes. The, the IB, there's A there. Yeah, I can see the A. Good. So it means that A will go and multiply by the A squared. So you have A keep A, I A. Are you okay so far? Okay. Okay, I agree. Okay, good. So now we are going to write the IC in terms of IA so that we can get all of them in IA, right? So is this IC we are moving to A? So to move just one of the A's, is that not it? It's A, yeah. Okay, good. So that, so that means IC in terms of IA is actually equals to A... I A. Are you okay so far? Yes. And looking at this one too, there's A squared there. At the IC side, there's A squared there. You can see, right? Yeah. Okay, good. So it means that the A will also go and multiply and we get it to be A cube at this point where I have marked. So you have eight keep IA. Okay. But we said based on A operator, we all know that A keep is equals to what? One. One. So because it's equals to one, it means the whole of this will be equals to one. One, one. So at the end, it will just be, this side will just be one times IA, which is IA. Okay. And this I will just be one times IE, 
which is the same as IA. Okay. So meaning you have IA plus IA plus IA, and that will give you three IA. And of course, we'll bring the over three to the down here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. Are you, are you okay so far? Yes. Okay, good. So because this is three and this is that down is three, then three, three will cancel. So you have your IA1, which is the positive sequence equals to IE. That means when that fault occurs, the positive sequence current will be the same as and the current, the current flowing through A. Okay. The same as the current flowing through A. So that part has been established. Okay. So it means if you are trying to check that fault, then you have to check the current that will flow through the A. Okay. Okay, so let me clear and let me move small down. Okay, so when you come to the other one, which is IA2, which is the negative sequence. Yes. The negative sequence current. And um, you say that you multiply. So by multiplication, it means is a down part here. So it means it will be one times IA, A squared times IB, then A times IC. Okay, all divided by three. And that will give you a i a plus A squared IB plus A I C. Are you okay so far to that point? Yes. Okay, good. So now, Okay, so now we are here. So we have to also rewrite them in terms of one particular uh, this thing. So we can say to rewrite them also in terms of A. Okay. Okay. Good. So the same thing, A operator. So we draw the vector. Then we said here is our I A. This side will be the IC. And this side will be the IB. And if you are, excuse, IB. And if you are able to move, then you move at a distance of A. Are you okay so far? Okay, good. So we want to write the IB in terms of IA. I think that's why we know. We yeah, A squared. A, A squared what? IA. A squared IA. Good. So if it's A squared IA, then it's already A squared there. So A squared times A squared will give us what? A4. A4. We have A4 IA. So that's why we got that. Okay. Then IC. We already know that. We said IC is actually what? AIC. Is that A, A, I, A? Is that not it? I, yes. And there's one A there. So that will give us A squared IA. Are you okay so far? Yes. Okay, good. So now the A4 IA is actually this. So A cube IA. A cube A I A. Good. And the cube becomes one. Yes. So, 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 it's, A, A, I A. Yeah, so it's A times A cube I A. So it becomes right. one. So this will rather make it become A I A. So that's why we have A I A here. Are you okay? Yeah. Are you okay? Yes. So we have just repeated this side here. Okay. So let's go to the next step. Let me move it down. Okay, good. So now, 
Okay, so looking at this side, you can clearly see that part, right? Yes. The A I A plus A squared I A, you can see that part? Yes. Okay, so you can factor I A out and that will get you A plus I A squared. And I, we said that based on the A operator, that is actually one minus, that's actually minus one. You can punch that and find out. I think we punch that. We say one yes. angle 120 plus one angle minus 120. And that will give you minus yeah. one. Minus one. Okay. That, that will make our A, I, A here becomes what? Minus I, A. Because actually it will be I, A times minus one. So that will give us minus what IE. So that is why we are having this. Are you okay? Yeah. And yeah. IA I minus IE is actually what? Zero. And zero divided by three is what? Zero. So there is no uh, negative sequence current that will flow. That one too is zero. Okay. So now that we understand this, so, so we can now conclude that it's only positive sequence currents that will flow and that will be equals to IA. That is a current in the, the, the line A. Okay. 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 And the initial deduction, we said that V A is equals to IA Z F. Yes. And now that we know that the positive sequence current is the same as the IA, we can, we can now replace it by IA1 because it's ZF. And that will give okay. us VA. Are okay. you okay so far? Yes. Okay, good. So now we are going to determine what will happen at the voltages. The voltage levels, what will happen. So the voltage we want to find out the VA. Now you see that we are considering only the, the A, the, the A that is actually having the impedances on it. That is what we are considering. So we are considering the positive sequence, the negative sequence, and the zero sequence on the A. That's why we want VA0, VA1, and VA2. Are you okay? To use it yes. to determine the rest, to see what will happen on the system. Okay, so the same way we can find the VA0, which is a negative, the zero sequence voltage. Only the zero sequence voltage. So the same way we can use the same equation to determine the zero sequence voltage. So one, okay. one, 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 one will be multiplied by VA, V, 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 C. And that will be VA plus V, V plus V, C. But since we have said that V, V, and VC will automatically go to zero because there are no resistance attached to it. We can now say that VAO because VA over 3. Because the two okay. voltages will be zero. Okay. Good. So now we can also look for, that is the negative, the zero sequence. So we know that a zero sequence will flow. But whatever VA voltage it has, it will divide it by 3 and let that flow in the system. Can I continue? Yes. Okay, good. So the next thing is the positive sequence, which is the VA1, positive sequence voltage. So that one, we do the same multiplication. That will be uh, one times VA, A times VB, and A squared times VB. Okay. Uh, sorry, VC. Are you okay? okay? Divide by three. Okay. V, V, B, and VC are zero. Good. So it means whatever you are multiplied by that will, will not mean anything because if you multiply okay. 50 billion by zero, you still get zero. So we have only V over three. Yes. So that one also will give you V over three. Are you okay now? Good. Yes. Then we come to the other one, which is the negative sequence voltage. That one mm -hmm. to do the same multiplication, which is, yeah. 
Um, we do the same multiplication, which is one, one times V A. Uh -huh. V A B C. V A V B B C. Very good. So the same thing. So this part will go and multiply by this part. Then when you are done, you divide it by the three. Are you okay? okay. The same yes. thing. So this one will give you V A, A squared B V, then A V C. So that is what you will get. Okay. So, okay, so that is what you get. So if that one will let you come here. So VA plus A squared B plus A, a V C. And that one to the same thing will follow. It will still be zero, is that not it? Yes. Okay, it will still be zero. So it means at the end, it will still remain VA over three. So you can say that our VA2 and VA1 and VA0 are all the same. They are all equal to VA over 3. So the voltage, that is the voltage VA, will be divided mm -hmm. by 3 and to be shared among the three voltages. Okay. That is what is trying to tell you that this is what, to what will happen. When that kind of fault occurs. So that if you are, it's a relay you are setting or it's a breaker, you just pick the voltage on that line. If it's 351 or 415, then you just divide that voltage by yeah. that. Then you know that that is the voltage that is likely to flow in any of the lines. Then you okay. set, yeah. So you set your relay to look for that voltage. So anytime you see that kind of voltage, you know it's a fault flowing, then it can trip for you or it can break the circuit for you. Are you okay now? So like um, mm -hmm. uh, during the lettuce, yeah, you're drawing some circuit diagrams. Mm -hmm. Is it is that one to a different means of solving the same question? You are drawing circuit diagrams for no, you can you see that this one I when I was deducing it, mm -hmm. I I was actually drawing a circuit from it from the fourth. I was saying the current to all of them will okay. flow to this point. You remember, at this point, let me go and show. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so the by the deduction, but we by, only need to get. He said, "Come again." So we, what we need is that matrix. Yes, if but you to get that matrix. But yes, you need the matrix, and you also need these initial boundaries. Yeah, matrix and the boundaries. Yes. And you're able to determine these initial boundaries, you need to draw the circuit, deduce the circuit diagram for yes. what has happened. Okay. So I didn't draw the circuit, but I was deducing it. Okay. And uh, I said that. Um, well, you're saying at the point you asked us, you use Tevin's theory to look for the voltages. Is that time for what uh, uh, circuit current? Uh, other yes, things. yes, based on the circuit diagrams that is given and based on what is happening, or the question is asking you. But this, this part is where you use the formulas. Uh, this part is where you use the formulas. Yeah, you deduce the formulas and you use the formulas to solve a, a question. The fault may occur in different parts or different areas or different conditions. And now let because of that you have to apply other you have to apply say these ideas and also other circuits. But the formulas that is used in each sequence is what we are deducing. So that what if we say there's a three phase force that okay, and it has short circuit two lines and has also linked one line to the ground. Then you know it's maybe referring to. A for a similar for that what we are deducing, then you know that is the formula you should have to use. Then oh. you can know the conditions. You can know that when that fault occurs, it means your IA will be equals to your positive sequence. There will be no zero sequence, and you'll know that. So when you are deducing a formula or when you are calculating, you have that at the back of your mind. So you use that value. So if we find IA, you know your IA is the same as your positive sequence current. Your negative sequence currents are zero. If you're able to find your VA, 
Then when you divide by three, then you can get the voltages at various sequences. Okay. Uh, so you have to first understand what really each fourth case, all the fourth case, what really happens. So this is one of the case. So you understand what, so you want to deduce the formula and understand what really happens at this case. So I was saying that current will flow from here, the IA into this resistor. And the, because there's a joint here, there's a bridge here, because the human being or the tree or something has bridged from here to here. It's having a resistance here, but the resistance from this point to this point are negligible. Yes. It's, neg it's negligible. So because of that, it has breached the tray, but there is a heavy resistance here in the node. So when that, when that situation happens, this is what really happened in the system. So you have to draw a circuit for it, actually. So you look at how the current are flowing. So you see that there will be a resistor here. Then it comes to this point. Then you go to the ground. The ground, okay. Then this. So it means that Okay. You, you can see. So this you are ZF. Yes. Okay. So the, the fault occurs on this line. And because of that, IA flows through it to the ground, through the fault. But the IB mm -hmm. was shorting to the ground because of the fault. So it just flowed directly to the ground. And the IC was also shot into the ground because of the fault. So it's also flowed directly to the ground. But at the point in the ground here, that is where catchers come into play. So you can v, A, V, B, B, C. Our voltage. How are they connected? V, A, V, V, our voltage is between this. So this is your VA. You can see now the VA. Can you see the VA? Yes. Good. So automatically, there's supposed to be a voltage here between this. But because there is no resistor or the impedance here, then that makes your VV automatically going to zero. Zero. It, okay. it, it will have zero potential. It's moving from here to the ground. There are no resistance. So it will have zero potential. When that happens, means based on all that here, the voltage here will be the same as the voltage at the top here. Okay. Uh -huh. So the same thing will apply to this one. So it will have zero potential. So all of them will be zero. And the currents will flow all right because there's no resistance. So it will flow and get to this point. And this one will flow and get to this point. This one will get to this point. But I just want all of them together will flow to the ground. And at the ground, everything there is zero. So because of that, the ground is the one flowing away from the junction. So you can base on catch-up says that it was sum to zero. So yes. if you are able to identify, now you cannot say VA will be equal to this IA flowing through the resistor times this resistor or the impedance, like the fourth impedance. So if you're able to deduce this circuit, then you can now draw, uh, you can now come out with this, the barrier potential, the barrier conditions. Okay. 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 So you cannot come with the conditions, state these conditions. Once you state these conditions, that is when you can now code the metrics. Because when you code the metrics and you're able to do this, this is a formula. So you have to come back and look at the conditions to able to reduce the formula to acceptable way where you can solve them. Because you know this is equal to zero. Based on the conditions, that's why we're able to got IA zero to be equal to zero. Are you getting the point now? Yes. Okay, good. So let me clear. So okay. you have to I draw. Mm. Okay. So now, where have you reached? Okay. So you have able to find out that. Now we know that VA zero, VA one, VA two are equals VA over three. 
We have raised that, right? Yes. Okay, good. So you can rewrite. So if you come here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to rewrite uh, VA in terms of VA1. Down here, therefore, at therefore, can you see that part? Yes. Okay. So that part here, where I'm going to mark with the blue in, what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to rewrite this guy here. Okay. I'm um, do spotlight. I'm trying to rewrite this guy here. Can you see them? Mm -hmm. Good. Yes. In terms of this. Can you see? So when I come here, okay. so when I come here, because there is trade down here, it means it will come and multiply this one. So that means mm -hmm. I have three, I have three VA1 equals to VA. And so I've just write them VA in terms of I, IA1. Are you okay? Are you okay? I'm at this part. Are you okay? Yes. Okay, good. So now let's continue. So now, if you do that, then you can now say VA because um, this is three VA1. And we said that VA1, uh, uh, how do I put it? We said that VA is equal to IA1ZF. Of course, mm -hmm. at this point, okay? Because we said this is equal to IA times what? ZF, when we were here. Okay. okay. When we were here, at the boundaries here, we were able to find uh, out that our VA equals IAZF. Uh -huh. Okay. And when we came here, we were able to find out that the, that IA that we are talking about, okay, that IA that we are talking about at this point here, you can see where I have marked blue. Uh -huh. That IA we are talking about at this point here, it's actually, actually equals to IA1. Okay. At this point here. So it means when we come down here, uh, we can now confidently say that, um, we can now confidently say that IA1 times ZF should be equal to VA. Are you okay with that? Are you okay? Hello? The network was that. Hello? Uh, yes, I'm saying that when we come here, we can confidently say that uh, where I have marked blue, we can say that IA1ZF is equal to VA. You can agree with that, right? Yes. Okay. And now we said VA2, the VA here is actually equal to 3VA1. So in terms of VA, we can put 3VA1 there, which is this side. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And, this, and this is equal to IA1ZF. So it okay. means we can say our VA1 is actually equal to IA1ZF over 3. Okay. So that means the positive sequence voltage in terms of that fault. When that fault occurs, the positive sequence voltage will be equal to the positive sequence current times the fault resistance divided by three, and that will be the voltage that will flow. Okay. And- Here we are. Yes, here we are. So with this, the resistance is known. The resistance is known. So all that you need to know, uh, look for is your IA1. Then you are able to determine the positive sequence voltage.
And once you know you are VA1, then you can determine VA. So you know you can determine VA because VA1 is equal to VA over 3. So if you multiply your VA1 by 3, then you can get the voltage at VA. So meaning if you know VA, the voltage that was existing, existing before, that is the VA, this one. Okay? The VA. Okay. You can just divide it by 3. And yes. that will give you the VA1. And when you get the value for VA1, then depending on what you get, if you know the resistance, the fourth resistance, then you can determine the positive sequence, which is the IA1. So, okay. so that is how questions are asked. And sometimes based on that, they trick your destiny. So you have to use know these formulas by heart in your minds. But sometimes if you don't know, then you, know, you have to learn how to deduce them so that in the exams, if a question is asked, then you can quickly deduce them and get your formula and use it to solve the question. Okay. I hear you. Thank you. God bless you. Okay. Alison, 